Today on Stupid Fast RC, we're going through the basic setup for this racing drone. Here's a note, don't put your GoPro there, and I'll tell you why later. Anyway, this is just a basic setup, getting it flying, getting it out of the box, showing you how to do this piece of wiring, showing you how to program the board, get all the rotors programmed up, the motors running, the ESC, and ready to go. Okay, so, settle in for a long video and feel free to skip ahead. Today on Stupid Fast RC, I'm looking at the Echin Racer 250. This is a racing quadcopter, so this is really exciting. It's not ready to run. Um, in fact, it's a fair way from being ready to run. Okay, what we get in the box, props, uh, wiring, a charger. Now, I think this char oh, charger does not have a, an Australian plug if you're in Australia. Um, more props, these are clear. A battery, the uh, transmitting antenna for the um, FPV gear, and of course, a very cool looking quadcopter. Now, what you are going to need and uh, is FPV goggles if you're going to do this full on. We're actually starting from the beginning of this, so the whole idea of this uh, video is um, you're coming on a bit of a journey, I guess, to actually see how this comes from the ground up if you don't buy a ready to run and what you are going to need to get this running. Um, there's a couple of different controllers you can get. Now, in an ideal world, you'd have your own controller, um, probably something like a Spectrum. This is a 5E, but you probably need a 6I. Um, what I've done for this occasion is I've just bought a cheapy because really all I want to do is get this up and running. Um, and by cheapy, that's exactly what I mean. So um, you will need a receiver. So this has come with a receiver. Uh, one of the reasons I didn't actually buy the Spectrum is because uh, the receiver is about the same price as the transmitter. So um, look, I might do that later on, but for the purposes of getting up and running I'm going to put this in I'm going to wire it up and we're going to go from there now the first thing you should do is have a bit of a look around the boards there are a couple of ports here and there that have got some slots in but this is the one you're actually looking for and this is the one you need to connect to the receiver you're going to need the wiring diagram oh and by the way don't put your GoPro mounted like this um, and you'll see why at the end of the video spoiler I won't spoil it I won't spoil it um, this is the diagram you need. It starts with the throttle, the roll, the pitch, the yaw flight mode. Now, the wires that come out are in the same order that they will go into your receiver. It's, it's pretty much that simple. If you follow this diagram, if you hit pause here, um, it's fairly self-explanatory. For some reason, I think not all the wires are drawn on here, but if you just lay them into the receiver in the same order, um, that's actually not in the right order, but that's more or less where you're going to head, but go back to the wiring diagram, and you will end up in the right place. This is not as difficult as it looks, and um, that was my first attempt, and I didn't really um, get that right, but um, stick with it, go with the wiring diagram, and when it's working, it will light up and your model should end up looking pretty much like this, ready to connect and disconnect the battery. Don't put it inside because you need to connect the USB cord. And I haven't shown that here, but that actually goes up inside and onto the back underneath where that white aerial is there. And you'll see a little bit USB connector and that cable doesn't come with the model either. So um, you're gonna need one of those, connect it to your computer. And then you're gonna need to download a piece of software called Open Pilot. You will need Open Pilot. Now, don't go for the latest release. The version you need is O2 for this model. So I've got a Windows machine. I've downloaded Open Pilot release 150202. Uh, if you've got a previous version, you're going to have to uninstall it apparently and then reinstall this version because um, it won't talk to your firmware. If you're familiar with installing things in your computer, this is not going to be um, particularly difficult for you. Um, if you need to pause it, just look at the settings here, um, but it's fairly straightforward. I've gone with all the defaults and that's worked just fine. And I've also put it into a program files. Don't put it on your desktop or anything like that if you're uh, not familiar with it. And that will take you a little while, um, but it will download and uh, hopefully install in this way. 
Now I'm going to fast forward through all this because I'm sure you've seen all this before. I actually did originally watch a video from a lovely guy in Russia who saved my bacon here because I had no idea what I was doing but his video went for about, you know, there were two versions and it was a half an hour and it was like three quarters of an hour and he went through this in painstaking detail. Uh, happy for you to watch that, I'm not going to do that. Now if all that went well, you will arrive here. Notice a couple of things. Now I'm already connected um, and you can see from TXRX down the bottom there my transmitter and receiver uh, operational and running. If you've got any pro problems with this, plug them in, re-plug them, you know, start them, stop them until they actually work. You might have to try different ports on your computer, a few bits and pieces like that. But eventually you will reach a point where you'll be able to start the wizard. When you hit vehicle setup, you will get this. Now, you can't have propellers attached to the vehicle when you're proceeding. And that is because you're going to test run motors, you're going to do all sorts of stuff, and no propellers. You'll end up uh, in, on a version of Will It Blend. Not cool. Now, upgrade is going to ask you for an upgrade. You can, I, I am not doing that here. I've already done it. These are the settings that you'll need for this particular machine. Um, and then once you've got that far, the upgrade takes a little while, you hit next. I'm blasting through here, but um, these are the settings that you'll need. So you can just watch this, multi-rotor, some of these things are very obvious. And as I say, um, it's written on the screen anyway, so you, shouldn't, you wouldn't get too lost here. Once again, it's an X-Copter. Just hit next. That's the ESC, not that one. That's the Rapid, the one that's highlighted blue there, yep. And then there's some other options there for programming other vehicles. Uh, just go to next. This is where we can get the connection diagram if you missed it earlier on in the video. Um, you can save it if you want to um, or just have it on the screen until you've got it wired up. Once you've done that um, you're pretty much right anyway. Uh, strange that they put it into the uh, video here because you actually need it quite a bit earlier on than this but anyway that's fine. So we'll close and move on. Next, here you calibrate what the vehicle considers to be level. Now the important part of this is that the vehicle is actually level when it's doing it. So because it's going to use this in future to understand what level means. Um, this is a fairly quick procedure. Um, as I say, I put mine on the floor because I knew the floor was level. I wasn't sure about the table um, and went from there. Very quick little procedure. And then next. Um, this is a step-by-step -step as well and this is calibrating the engines and everything else. Now it's pretty clever because it's going to make you go through and tick that you've done everything correctly. Like no propellers, yes. Um, the vehicle is not pipe bent. So here we're taking the battery out, not powered by an external USB, uh, sorry, external source except for the USB. So the USB stays in, battery comes off and then you'll hear it beep. Once you see these steps here, one through to seven, uh, just follow those through, you won't go wrong. You'll hear it beep. I actually have muted the sound when I did this, unfortunately. So we go through, do these steps, and then click forward to the next screen. And one, when we exit this screen, the battery actually will be connected back to the um, model. Okay, on to the next screen. We're going to actually calibrate the output for each motor. Now, each motor here just needs to be ticking over. Mine were sitting at around about 1048. They're um, microseconds, I think, um, from what I could gather. That's kind of weird, but anyway. It sat at around about the 1048 mark and I tried to set each of these motors to roughly the same setting. The procedure for each, uh, once you've managed to get one right, um, they're pretty much the same. I started and stopped mine a couple of times just to make sure that they were going to start up and I didn't have the setting too low. When I later used the model, it didn't seem to make a lot of difference. Um, as long as the motors were starting up, I, I actually wasn't really sure where we should uh, set these and you know was there a too low or a too high but um, there seems to be obviously a bit of a scale here and there seems to be a fair bit of latitude for uh, being able to get them uh, up and running. I guess you just don't want them to kick in with too much power you know straight up but um, either way uh, this seemed to work and uh, there were no issues with it later on so I just got, went through and set them all up like this. This setting here allows you to grab some preset 
information from a list. I used Drone Frames DR250CF, which was there. Um, uh, I'm, I'm actually not going to do that right now because I've got current tuning. So I've already got a set of information sitting in the machine, so I'm not going to rehash that, and I'm actually not going to save this data at the end of this exercise either. Um, but you can see here it picks up photos. So if you've actually got something different to what I'm setting up here today, um, then you'll be able to do that as well. You can save all your settings to the computer. So in case something goes wrong, you can bring them back up. Um, but it's also important, I think this is saving it to the model, in fact. Yes, sorry about that, that was somewhat misleading. Um, and then you have to sit through it while that happens. Do not unplug it, all the usual stories. Um, so away this goes, takes a little bit of time. Once we've done all that, we can head back to the home screen and there's a few things that you can have a look at um, on the side there, but um, the th screen that we really want to do now is to set up the transmitter and this is just a couple of snapshots of what you can see by having a bit of a wander around and you can do that um, when you're ready on your own. Um, but this is the uh, critical one here, setting up the transmitter. So these are the arming, the flight mode, etc., etc. Oh, it's quite important to make sure that you don't set it to always armed and it actually goes through and does that for you when you're trying to recalibrate. But once you've finished, you will have to do that because, or, or however you want to arm your remote and you may want to make that a two step process rather than one. I, ha I had always arm because it's just simpler and I'm very wary that as soon as I power it up, it must have the throttle in neutral, etc. Otherwise, as soon as you power it up, um, you're, you're at risk of um, having the thing fly off. Now, um, just a bit of a quick wander around here. You can change um, the settings on a mass scale um, and it's just worth having a bit of a play with some of the stuff. Okay, so with your transmitter connected and running, um, one of the first things you're going to have to do is pick a mode. Now, modes I'm not going to go into here, but it depend it, depending where you want the throttle, the elevator, the rudder, left, right, that sort of stuff, that's all actually written on the screen. Um, it's a bit of personal preference, I think. Um, I have my throttle on the right, and um, mode one is where I use. Not everyone uses that. Everyone's different. Um, so that we've passed that point. We're now telling the um, computer what each of uh, the stick will you've got to move the sticks when it says to move them um, so that the computer understands what control does what and then we're going to center the sticks which will come up in the next step uh, once again all this stuff's on the screen so if i'm ripping through it too fast for you um, just read what's on the screen a um, couple of those switches are not on mine so i didn't have to do that everything needs to be centered here if everything's centered we hit the next button and um, the computer understands that well, that's the middle and then from there we're going to look at the extremities we're going to be wiggling everything to tell it okay so this is the full range of movement for every one of these controls so that we understand where left right up down is a um, bit of that sort of stuff going on once one now the other thing i guess you want to watch those dots to make sure that the stick is where the computer thinks it is so if you move it left it needs to go left if it doesn't do that, then in the next step, we might be telling it that the, some of these things here, like these things that are ticked. Now, these ticked have come up automatically for me. The computer's worked out that some of these are back to front. If you, if it hasn't worked that out, you may want to tick that box um, and sort it out. Failing that, if it doesn't work, you can go back to the two previous steps and repeat this process and... Um, the software will figure it out on the second pass. You may have to do it you know, maybe two or three times even, but um, perhaps if it hasn't worked it out the first time around, do it slower and do it again. That, that's the advice I would give you here, um, but it will, it will get there. You may not get it right the first time. No big deal. Go back and do it again. And that, that, that figures for this whole process. In fact, if this doesn't work for some reason or things are going back to front and it's not happy, um, something's just going to miss somewhere. Do the, go through the whole process, process again, or go through the part of the process. Here we are, see, I've, my sticks were back to front, and now I've just gone back and just hit restart. Doesn't take long, it's no big deal. Um, it's, doesn't, it's not the end of the world. And this time around, it looks like the software's gonna figure out what's going on, and I'm gonna skip ahead. Once I'm happy with all that, and I've saved the settings, um, I'm gonna go back and say, 
this is important. You go, I've got always armed and you can choose something different there, but I've just gone always armed. So that means when I turn everything on, this machine is ready to fly. I don't have to toggle my um, controls left or right or up down or anything like that. Some make you push the throttle up and down, that sort of thing. And that's where you would set that. I'm just going to go to always arm and I'm just going to be very wary that when I power it up, this thing is ready to roll. Okay, checking everything around the board now. I think we're ready for a bit of a test run. Let's see how that goes. Okay, now we're ready to fly, or are we? I have a little thing here called Phoenix 4 RSRC, um, which is a flight sim. The What I recommend you do is get the hang of moving this around. Now, if you haven't flown one before, this is gonna be what's happening to you in real life. You're not gonna be happy. It's much better to have a go at the sim and get the hang of it. If You, um, you can skip all this if you know what you're doing, but um, as I said in the beginning, this is a beginner's video, and I highly recommend that you don't take your model out in the park and smash it to pieces like this. You need to get a feel for this. This is not intuitive at all. It's not drive it like driving an RC car or anything like that. Um, this will do damage and you do get two sets of props and coming to the point of props, the props on this are two are right-handed and two are left-handed. It's written on the actual prop itself um, and you will have to figure out um, which is which. Written on the blades, if your eyesight's any good, is 5030R on two of the blades. Now the R blade, one of the right-handers is right-hand rear and diagonally opposite the front left blade is also going to have the R prefix, or sorry, suffix. So that'll be a 5030R as well. And the two blades that have a part number written on them with just 5030 will be, let me get this right, front right and rear left and because they're diagonal to each other. The nuts that hold them on are also left-hand threads. So just be careful with that. Don't tighten them and loosen them the wrong way because you'll get frustrated and break something. Um, so speaking of breaking something, here I am getting the hang of, um, oh look at that, yes, under control. Um, the other thing about this vehicle is that it's incredibly fast. Um, I didn't have a lot of luck flying this in real life. Um, the video was uh, more about getting ready to go and uh, getting started. And this is my beginner's video, as I said. Um, and you're going to see shortly also the reason why we don't strap a GoPro to the front of it. Okay. Just show you, want to show you how powerful this thing is, right? Hold it. That's actually seriously hard to hold. So as you can see, um, we think the GoPro came off and went through the props. So that's why you don't put your GoPro there. Anyway, um, certainly not like that. It needs to be more secure. I hope you enjoyed that and um, that you learned something and uh, look forward to seeing you in the sport. Cheers. Bye.